35. Genesis 35. The kids were singing that song, Oh, What a Savior. Uh, a lady we went to church with 21 years, Miss Hilda Beck. I don't know if Dan and Charlie remember Miss Hilda. She passed away. She was 57 years old. And a young man there that we've known all them years, he was friends with the family, went over to see her. I guess about three days before she died, she he walked in and she was glassy eyed. She didn't even know who he was, and he'd known her all all his life. And he was broken hearted, you know, and they were around the bed crying. And she, he said that just laying there in the bed, glassy eyed, she just started singing. And she started singing that song. She just looked up toward him and started saying, "Oh, what a savior and oh, what a master." <laughs> Oh, what a friend is he! And they, said, they all started crying and shouting. And that young man, he had tears streaming down his face. He goes, he goes, Brother Mark, I ain't never, I ain't never seen the grace of God like that. I ain't never seen it like that. <laughs> amen. Even when you're going out, folks, if you're saved, Amen. I mean, man, alive, we ain't got much sense when we're healthy. Amen. When everything falls apart, we, amen. Surely we ain't gonna have much. Uh, my cousin, he went to see a fellow in his church. And he got a rare uh, virus and he got amnesia, and it was just a temporary deal. But he didn't know who anybody was. He didn't know who he was, his wife. He didn't know how old he was, where he's from. Uh, my cousin went in, which was his pastor. He said, "Do you know who I am?" And he goes, "No." And my cousin Jim said, well, what do you know? He looked at me and says, you know what? He said, the only thing I know is I'm a born-again Christian. <laughs> he said, I don't believe that. It ain't for unbelievers. Amen. So I know, I know him. Amen. Genesis chapter number 35. And we'll read down through here a little bit. And we'll throw a fit too. Amen. The Bible says, in God said unto Jacob. And buddy, that's a mouthful right there. Yeah. We read over that, but I'm telling you, let me ask you, when's the last time God said anything to you? Yeah, sure. Amen. Amen. I mean, when God says something to you, man, what a privilege. Yeah. Uh, what an honor. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And God said unto Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel, and dwell there, and make there an altar unto God that appearest unto thee when thou fleddest from the face of Esau thy brother. Then Jacob said unto his household, and all that were with him, put away the strange gods that are among you, and be clean, and change your garments. You say, why did he say that? Man, they were going to meet with God. Yeah. Uh, God had spoken. When God speaks, people change. Yeah. Amen. Amen. When God speaks, hey, business picks up. Yes. Amen. Amen. You'll do things you never dreamed you'd ever do. Uh, I never dreamed that I'd ever, man, be in church in the ministry. Never dreamed that. I never dreamed, man. I remember my wife, I remember when I got my hair cut, she was amazed. <laughs> Amen. I told her, I said, I'm quitting dope. I'm quitting all that. She said, you quit rock music too? I went, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> She mentioned it, yeah. We're quitting it all. <laughs> and I've joined the nerd crowd. Amen. And I like it. Amen. <laughs> Verse 3 he said, And let us arise and go up to Bethel, and I will make there an altar unto God who answered me in the day of my distress and was with me in the way which I went. Do you remember here tonight? Do you remember when God answered you? In the day of your distress, uh, I say it everywhere I go. I, I'm looking at this crowd. I doubt if this crowd got to God intellectually. I doubt if you, amen, got to God theologically. Did any of you, amen, go get the books you're supposed to get, the Bible, and, amen, study your way to God? I trow not. <laughs> amen. The way you got to God is He answered you in your distress. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He was a mess and God came by. Yeah. The high sheriff of heaven came yeah. by and arrested you. Yeah. He answered you in the day of your distress. Yeah. Man, every once in a while you need to go back 
back there. Amen. Verse 4, And they gave unto Jacob all the strange gods which were in their hand, all their Facebook, <laughs> all their computers, amen, all their earrings which were in their ears. Man, alive, we did that in the average church now. We'd have enough, we could make a, we could make a golden calf. <laughs> Lord, we built this fire and threw all these earrings in there and a calf came out. Nowadays, you just get the boys' earrings, you'd be doing all right. Said all the earrings which were in their ears, and Jacob hid them under the oak which was by Shechem. I always wondered if somebody had tried to go back and find that. Amen. Said, and they journeyed, and the terror of God was upon the cities that were round about them. And they did not pursue after the sons of Jacob. Do you, you reckon that was because of Jacob's fierce countenance? <laughs> Why, no. Jacob was a smooth man. Amen. Jacob was a, his name means supplanter. My dad would say he was a conniver. Huh? He didn't even have enough hair on him to pass for his brother. He's a smooth-skinned little fellow. Do you think people are afraid of him as countenance? Why, no. The terror is because of God. Yeah, amen. amen. And man, like Brother Charlie said, we need to get God to move again. Yeah. Said in verse number 6, So Jacob came to Luz, which was in the land of Canaan, that is Bethel, he and all the people that were with him. And he built there an altar and called the place El Bethel. Because there God appeared unto him when he fled from the face of his brother. I want to preach for a little while tonight about that place called El Bethel. Bethel means the house of God. El Bethel means the God of the house of God. Yes. Amen. Father, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for saving us. Thank you for the good preaching already tonight. Thank you for the singing. God bringing folks in. And, Lord, we love this church. We love this meeting. And, God, you've always met with us. Lord, we need yes. you again. Yes. And Lord, as these last days, and we're troubled, God, and all the things that we see, and traveling on the road, and Lord, all the, the backslidings, and Lord, we just see a great turning away from Thee, God to help us, give us a space of revival, and Lord, to nail in Your holy place, revive us again, yes. that Thy people may rejoice in Thee, and God will thank You for what You do, in Jesus' name, Amen. amen. Jacob goes back to Bethel. Now, let me say, I'm going to say a lot of things tonight about Bethel and El Bethel. Bethel is the house of God. Thank God for the house of God. Yes, amen. amen. I'm yes. not going to slight it one bit. Uh, amen. Everything good happened to me happened to me in the church house. Yes, amen. 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 The church house is where God straightened me out. Yes. Amen. I got, man, uh, my life was a mess. Uh, God turned it all around. Amen. And thank God for Bethel. But I'm telling you, El Bethel is much different. Amen. Amen. Bethel's good, but El Bethel, that's the best. Because that's the God of the house of God. Do you realize in Bethel, you can administrate in Bethel. But El Bethel, you can't administrate. Amen. You can run things. God will let, let man even operate and run things at Bethel. But El Bethel, oh no, he runs things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we talked about, Brother Charlie talked about running and shouting. He said, what is that? That's El Bethel. Yeah, yeah. That's when God decides to show up in his house. Yeah. Amen. El Bethel makes people that's never done that do that. Amen. Yeah. I, I remember, man, a lot of my mind goes back. I remember Brother Maddox running here. I got a picture of that. Somebody got a photo, amen, got their Kodak out. A Kodak moment, amen. And Brother Maddox running full speed, amen. Was <laughs> His full speed wasn't very fast at that time because he was bad shape. But he ran the aisles that night. And I, I remember uh, my wife, Miss Janet, and them, they got out and ran with him. And buddy, it started with them. I remember Barry running. He looked like the cowardly lion running from the Wizard of Oz. 
Something was after him, amen. He said, what was that? That was, that was El Bethel. And buddy, when it's the God of the house of God, but that's when I like it. Don't you? Amen. 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 We've gotten so used to Bethel that I'm telling you, things have gotten, amen, so uh, you can't fall asleep when it's El Bethel. Amen. amen. At El Bethel, man, things pick up. Amen. Waters turn to wine yeah. at El Bethel. Yeah. Amen. Lepers are cleansed yeah. at El Bethel. Yeah. Sinners are saved. Yeah. People are called to preach yeah. at El Bethel. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Men are stirred. Young people stirred up. People, amen. They give their lives to God at El Bethel. Yeah. Boy, I want that, don't you? Yeah. Amen. Uh, people, they'll think you're drunk when it's El Bethel. These are not drunken as you suppose. It's like the two fellas that came out of the bar one night. They're walking down through there and it had rained and a big mud puddle. They stepped in that mud puddle and they seen the moon shining in there. One of them looked at the other and said, Hey man, what are we doing up here? <laughs> Haven't you ever been that way? Huh? Well, I remember times, boy, I'm telling you, Hey, how did we get up here? I remember that night, but I remember like it was yesterday. I remember when God moved in there at Charity, and we heard a thumping in the back wall, and I looked back here, and Bob was thumping his head against the wall. He said, why? Who knows? There's nobody going to ask him. Amen. Just leave him alone, man. Walk around him. Amen. The two of the girls got saved. Melody and Susanna. Amen. Boy, I remember that. They got saved on Wednesday night and on Thursday night. They testified. God moved in there and 30 kids got saved. Uh, that's when Mark Kelly got saved. Boy, God moved. Say, what was it? It was El Bethel that night. Boy, it moved in there. God moved in. There was like a fog in the room. And people were praising God. And buddy, they played Amazing Grace on the bagpipes. And I looked at Brother Earl. I said, Brother Earl, have you ever seen it like this? He said, I've never seen it like this. And buddy, there for a little while, uh, it ceased to be Bethel. And it was hell Bethel. Uh, we felt like we was four feet off the ground. And God was moving. But I'm telling you, I want that again, don't you? I want to see God moving away like he's never moved before. And I believe he can do it. Amen. We get out of the way. I know this. Churches don't split at El Bethel. Amen. Differences are put back together at El Bethel. Amen. I've seen, I've seen my fill of it. I don't want to see no more. Amen. You go through one. It's horrible. I hate it. Hate it like a snake. Amen. But when it's El Bethel, boy, thank God when he moves. Amen. Amen. Say, so what is El Bethel? Let me give you a few things. When it's El Bethel, it's a place of remembrance. He said, go down there. Go back to where you fled from your brother. Remember when you called on me? Remember in distress when I answered you? Go back to where you was. That's where El Bethel is. You want to see it here tonight? Go back to where you were when he found you. He said, it ain't that simple. Yes, it is. Amen. Some folks, I don't believe they can ever go back. I don't know if they ever have. Man, I can't help it. It draws me in. It hooks me and pulls me in. Boy, thank God. Amen. On June 1982, down at Bible Baptist Church, I, on the seventh row back, the old preacher preached the hell out of me and showed me the Lord Jesus on the cross. I got saved. I ain't never been the same. We went down there a few years ago, me and uh, Brother Danny and Miss Dee Dee and my wife wasn't with us. She was sick or something that morning. No, my daughter was uh, sick. She was having morning sickness real bad. My wife stayed with her. And we went there to Bible Baptist. And Danny and Dee got up and sang. And they were singing. Uh, oh, they were singing that song. Oh, I can't remember the name of it now. Man, my mind slipped. It's, uh, I'm just not the same. Oh, yeah. Amen. Yeah. He lives yeah. in me. He lives in me, yeah. you know, and all that. Well, they were up there singing. Nobody said nothing. No amens, no nothing. Dr. Upton got up, and he came up there and stopped them. And he's there, got his arms on both of them. He looks at the congregation there, and he goes, What's wrong with you folks? He goes, Ain't y'all saved? He said, Man, I remember, I remember years ago, somebody sang this song in here and said, This place, would be, they'd be swinging off the rafters in here. Boy, I'm sitting there, and my heart starts pounding. 
my hands get sweaty. Yeah. And they start singing again the same song. He said, start to again. And they start singing, he lives in me. He lives in me. And boy, I jumped up. Hey, Amen. I couldn't help it no more. I got a case that can't help it. And I was sitting over here and I pointed over there to where I got saved. And I screamed at the top of my lungs. And buddy, I got a good set of them. Amen. Yeah. And I was saying, over there, right over there is where I got saved. There's where he came in. There's where he moved in on me. But I've never been the same since. Hey, that's when God moved in. That's where I got saved. God rescued me. You ever go back to that place? Every once in a while, why don't you clear you off the spot and shout every once in a while? There should be a good place to do it. We'd understand. We wouldn't think nothing of you. Amen. We wouldn't, everything wouldn't stop. Go, whoo. Well, maybe a couple of you we would, but we get over it. It's a place to remember. It's a place to remember. You remember your first church? Yeah. You remember where he's at? Remember the preacher that was preaching when you got saved? Yeah. Remember your first Bible? Yeah. <laughs> I remember my, my uncle gave me my first Bible. It was one of those Jerry Falwell, uh, one of them Liberty College Bibles. Big old thick Bible. That was my first one. It was used. And then uh, Dr. Upman got me and my wife both a Cambridge Bible. Boy, well, Terry sat. Amen. Do you remember? Do you remember the first time? Remember the first time a preacher asked you to pray? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I do. Yeah, yeah. I remember Dr. Ruby getting up there and saying, Well, let's say, 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 brother, uh, brother Mark McGee, you pray for us this morning. Aren't right? <laughs> those gracious heavenly fathers? <laughs> <laughs> Act like those other guys that prayed. And I prayed and I looked over at my uncle, my dad, and my uncle. He had both thumbs up. He's crying. He's going. We got it now. Remember when you got baptized? Yeah. You remember that? Yeah. Well, I remember. I remember getting into baptism. I remember waiting there. My cousin Jim, he baptized me down there at Bible Baptist. I remember him looking. He seen I was next. He walked up. And he held the glass there. His voice cracked. He said, "There's some things you get to do as a preacher. That's a real honor." He said, and that's to baptize members of your own family. He motioned me down there. I stepped down in that water. Man, I felt like I was 10 feet tall. He said, this is my cousin Mark. He said, he'd come out of a life of drugs. God saved him. He said, he's in jail. What a mess. God rescued him. Yeah, yeah. But I'm telling you, I man, I could almost I could almost froze up and walk on the water right there. <laughs> Amen. And he baptized me. I come up out of the water. I had a lead. Jeans t shirt on. I went, Yeah! Amen. Yeah. You know, don't you think? Yeah. When it's El Bethel, it's a place to remember. Yeah. Place to remember. I don't understand. I, I preach to folks all the time. They ain't never got happy. Yeah. Yeah. They ain't never shouted. They don't never say amen. Uh -huh. yeah, I don't understand you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're an enigma to me. Weird. Strange. Once in a while, don't it get a hold of you? Isn't there a tug from the other world every once in a while? Has it gotten that? Has it gotten that far? Are we so good at Bethel now that God won't even can't even show up? Yeah. El Bethel. El Bethel. I'll tell you what else. It's a place of repentance. These folks changed their garments, man, pulled their earrings out. Got clean. Say why? God met with them. You remember that? Amen. Man alive, the old preachers preached. Man, they preached against everything. Yeah. Me and Brother Preacher was talking about that. So preaching about praying in your drawers. You can't pray in your drawers. <laughs> Amen. Man, they preached against everything. Cowboy boots. Man, we done. Them, uh, I was thinking me and Brother Hood sitting here uh, when me and Brother Jimmy was way back yonder at King James Jubilee. 1982, 1983, 84, you realize all them men that were bigger than life to us, they were our age now. They've been, they were, they were old men then, we thought. Now here we are, we're the old men. And man alive, those guys, they preached again everything. Yeah. 
Yeah. We probably all are. God, God, don't kill us. Please don't kill us, Lord. Amen. Nowadays, Amen. We, can't, we, have, we can't even we can't even woo you down here. Yeah. We can't even get you down here to pray for your neighbors or your family. Yeah. So you're just trying to get us to the altar. Yeah. Amen. Things pick up when you're down here. Amen. 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 It's a place of repentance. So you know what the difference between seeing and believing is? Repentance. Yeah. There's a difference in that part. Amen. If it's wrong, quit it. Yeah. Amen. If you can't quit it, kick yourself. Right. Amen. Lock yourself in a room. Don't come out till you're right with God. Amen. Is he worth it? Amen. 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 Place of repentance. No repentance, no remorse. No remorse, no respect. He's talking about teenagers. They don't respect their elders no more. But if we grew up, we had to look a man in the eyeball when you shook hands with them. Right. Why, if we disrespect, he's talking about a, an umpire or a ref or a school teacher. Dad would kill us. Amen. Now, it's all right for Dad to get mad at them, but not us. Boy, I'm telling you, it's changed. A lot's changed. Talk to a kid nowadays. How you doing, young man? All right. What do you mean, all right? Yeah. Snatch him by his ear, bring him back over, and say, hey, boy. He said, good, sir. <laughs> Quiet now, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, wow. so you can't make him kids do that. I can make every one of them in here do that. <laughs> do I hear a second? <laughs> Let's just take a 10 minute break right now. Amen. Whip every kid in here. Hallelujah. <laughs> no repentance. No repentance breeds rebellion. Amen. No repentance brings a load of resentment. You know what I noticed traveling around the country? You know what happens when it's only Bethel? You know what happens? You get tired of the rules. Yeah. 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 Boy, it's all this stuff goes on the internet. I, I hate it sometimes. But, uh, I know people, I know people have gotten tired of the rules. I know pastors, wives that have. I've seen them. I ain't going to go into detail. You can tell. You can tell. You can't get up and pull it for a week. You can't preach a Sunday through Friday and not see it. Amen. You can tell when somebody, amen, likes preaching or not. You can tell when they're fighting. You can tell when they're running from God. One guy, man, his wife affecting his other kids, found out his daughter went to Bible college, got kicked out. And she did something bad enough to get kicked out. I ain't gonna say what it was, it's bad enough. And that, that mama, that, that pastor's wife, she got mad she you know what she got mad at? The whole system. Yeah. You know what basically she got mad at? God. Yeah. All the rules. She's you know what she said? I'm tired of the rules. Yeah. In just Bethel that's all it is. Yep. Some of you kids sitting here, that's why you just, you're on the brink. Just that rebellion. You'll be gone next. You know what made the difference? You know why we're still here, boys? El Bethel. Yeah. Yeah. It's the God of the house of God. Yeah. There's a difference. Yes. There's a difference. Amen. It's bigger. He's bigger than all of us. Yeah. Amen, amen. Let me say this. It's a place of revival. Boy, to see revival nowadays. My, my, my. Uh, we, I was telling you all about that meeting we had in Canada. The kids, that girl wanted to dance. One of the churches that came to that meeting, uh, they went back to their church. They had Sunday night, they had the kids testify. And Sunday night, church was over this way up in Canada. This is a fundamental church. Really not our stripe. At this uh, fundamental church, that after church was over, said so the adults were all staying in the vestibule. Pastor walked out there and it scared him at first. He thought a coup had developed. <laughs> he goes, What's up? And they're going, well, We're asking you, where's our kids? He looked in the auditorium, they wasn't there. He looked around. Somebody went to the basement. They come up and said, Pastor, come here. Went down the basement, all the teenagers down there flailing around the floor, praying and crying. They're begging God to move in their church. Them adults standing up there dumbfounded. They said, What in the world happened over at that, that team meeting? That Sunday night, that meeting went two days, and I preached 
six times in two days. And then Sunday morning and Sunday night, they had their kids, the home church did. And that pastor, Brother Rob, uh, Rob Carlson, he, uh, his daughter testified. She's 15 years old. And she got up, and this is what she said. She goes, you know, we went into this teen lightning meeting, and she said, I didn't realize how backslid that our youth group was. Well, I sat there, I was getting ready to preach, and he got me up to preach after they testified. I walked up there, and I said, man, I said, the message has been preached. I kept all those kids up there. I said, she said it. I said, you don't need no more message than that right there. Do you realize how backslid you are? And that was about 6.30. We were still in the platform. I was still up directing the invitation at 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> I like it when it's El Bethel, don't you? Amen. Place of revival. Put away change. I've seen kids come. I've seen them give up their earrings and nose rings, belly button rings. I've seen them give up their PCP players. I've got iPods and iPads, all kinds of stuff. I've got kids give me stuff for three, four hundred dollars in the in the box, in the collection box. I had a girl, 14 years old, hand me a rum bottle. Seal been broke. There's been about that much gone. She had drank at at the church in the parking lot. And she said, "Preacher." I drink one of these a day, 14 years old. She says, I'm an alcoholic. Wow. She gave me that bottle. She goes, the night I got right with God. I don't know what that does to you folks. I'm telling you, I, I, I get beside myself. I got razor blades in there, exacto knives, kids cutting themselves. You wouldn't believe. You said, why are you so hard on kids? You have no idea. There's probably a cutter in here, I wouldn't shock me one bit for what a cutter sitting here. You say, what's a cutter? That's somebody that thinks everything's against them. They blame themselves. There's deep, dark hatred. There's resentment, depression, oppression. And the devil's on your back. And in the secret places in your room, wherever you take something to cut yourself. And those kids, you know what they say? That's the only time I feel happy is when I'm hurting myself. It ain't just kids now. I got adults coming to me showing me where they cut themselves. I'm telling you, El Bethel straighten that out. Yeah. Amen. Then let me say this. It's a place of renewal. If you still got your Bible open, look at verse number 9. It says, And God appeared unto Jacob again when he came out of Bananaram and blessed him. And God said unto him, Thy name is Jacob. Thy name shall not be called anymore Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name. And he called his name Israel. Amen. <laughs> you know what you know what El Bethel is? It's a place of renewal. Amen. Amen. Some old preacher said years ago, I don't know who it was, but it's a true statement. And if I was given if I was given an audience in a court of law, I could do the same thing. He said what? I could prove the existence of God by one word, Israel. How else can you explain Israel? And Jacob, this smooth skin, smooth talker, this supplanter, this heel, this conniver, this stealer of the birthright, amen, meets with God. God changes him. Changes him so much, touches the hollow of his thigh. Amen. And changes his name. Amen. And that old man now, he's part of history forever. Because he's part of the history of the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Israel. Amen. Now, man, in the news every day you hear the land of what? Israel. Amen. Say, so what does God do with me? He'll change you too. There'll be a renewal. There'll be a renewal action to take place. There'll be a remodeling that's done. Yeah. He'll come in and sweep out the old booger man who lives in yeah, your house. Sir. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. He'll sweep out them old cobwebs that are in your brain. Amen. Them old coldness that's in your heart, like Brother Charlie preached. Yeah. Amen. Say, so what is it? 
It's Elbeth. Amen. The God of the house of God. Let me ask you, when's the last time you talked to him? If it's El Bethel, it'll be different. Hey, Father, I love you. Thank you, Lord, for tonight. Thank you, God, for your word. God, I pray you're blessed now. Blessing this invitation. God, have your way. Lord, this week, God, please. Lord, we love the church. We love Bethel. God, we're longing for El Bethel. Lord, help us. I pray in Jesus' name. Tonight, on